You got to be a closer in construction or you're destined to fail. All right, that's a little bit dramatic, but the truth is that in construction, just like in any other sales business, you got to be a closer. And today we're going to talk about five strategies that I've picked up over the years and strategies that I've learned on what you can do and how you can close more construction projects. If you don't know who I am, my name is Daniel Quindemel. I'm a construction consultant and I specialize in working with contractors to grow their construction business. And I see all the time in our own business. So we do a lot of estimating for contractors. I see that a lot of our contractors, they spend time to get the lead. They get the word of mouth lead or they get it from the blue book or from construct connect or wherever they get it from. We do the estimate for them. They submit their proposal and then they kind of go ghosts. I'm like, why would you spend the time, the money, the effort to do all that if you're not going to like close the deal? And over the years, I feel like a lot of contractors, they, they kind of do this. They kind of, they, they do all the steps, but they can't close. And I think, honestly, I think that's why most contractors close rate is about 10% or less. I've heard of some guys bidding 20 jobs and not getting any of them or 20 jobs and getting only one. And uh, I, I don't understand when some of our clients are doing 50, 60% of their, their bids are closing. I'm like, what are we doing different or what are they doing different? The reality is most contractors can't close. And it's not that it's necessarily a contractor thing. It's a salesperson thing. Most salespeople aren't closers. You, it's, it's super easy to go visit somebody, go talk to them, go, you know, go get a proposal, go do an estimate, hire an estimating firm, do it in house, whatever. It's easy to do those things. How do you close? What's the strategy? How do you negotiate? Like most contractors don't know how to do it. And today I'm going to give you my five best strategies on how to close strategy. Number one, get the inside information. So inside information in the stock market is typically illegal and you can't do that. However, if we build in construction, strategic contacts, if we build relationships, if we visit the client, if we get to know them, we're going to actually be able to use this data for our market research. So we're going to know where the market, the trends are, if the prices are going up or down, we're going to, uh, we're going to be able to have an opportunity to adjust our bid. So there's a lot of features that come out of it. Um, I'll give you, a, I'll give you a quick story. There is this company called RCC before I am builders. I was part of a, a commercial construction company. And I used to, one of the things I used to do with the owner is we would go visit clients. And I remember we went to go visit this specific company named RCC. And every time we went to go visit them, the two estimators, they would be super happy to open up their computers, look at the, the last proposals we sent, look at the jobs that they're currently bidding. There's, there are many times that we walked out of there with more projects to bid. There are other times that they've give they gave us feedback on our numbers. Hey, you're number three, you're number four. And they were get they would give us the inside information. And there was even one specific circumstance where they had gotten awarded the job and the estimator says, Hey, why don't you call John on Monday at about nine in the morning? Because that's when he's going to do his buyout. And that's when I realized that if you don't get the inside information, it's almost impossible to close. And that's why everybody's always complaining for the last, I don't know, 50 years. I've heard that, that like all these old school guys, they've been saying the same thing forever. The only way to win in construction is by being the low bidder. And I've busted that myth over and over and over. Even in my own construction company, people would hire us being the high bidder. So you don't need to be the low bidder. You don't need to compete, compete on price. And everything that I teach, if you watch all my videos, it's all about value, relationships, and really investing in the people. Build strategic relationships with key people in the companies. Now, a lot of times it's really hard to get in with companies. And I call this concept getting behind enemy lines. The people that are the decision makers, the gatekeepers are typically either if you're if you're a sub bidding for a GC, the gatekeeper is typically either a project manager or it's a senior project manager. It's not the estimator. Typically, the estimators are, li are, are literally they, they're proposal getters. They prepare a package and they hand it off to the project management team to go do the project. So they really have zero, almost zero influence. They might give you insight on when to come visit, who to talk to, things like that. But the real decision makers are the project managers and the senior project managers, even the superintendents. Now, if you're a general contractor and you are trying to get in with an architecture firm, you want to talk to the designers. You want to talk to sometimes the architects have people that they run the construction part of their contracts. It's called contract administration, where they're basically functioning like the owner's rep. So sometimes you want to find out who the key people are. 
And the only way to do that is to get behind enemy lines. How do you get behind enemy lines? You have to win your first few projects. And when you first, and the way you win your first few projects is you compete on price. And when you win on price, you're going to get into that negotiating table. You're going to get behind enemy lines, get to know the superintendents, the project managers, the designers, the chief project managers, all the important people in the company. Another pro tip is go to the job site visits, go to the job site walkthroughs, because the, that's when everybody's going to be there. Usually the project manager that's going to run the job is going to be there. The estimator is going to be there. Maybe even the owner is going to be there. And if you want to show them that you have interest in the project, show up, show up to the job site. A lot of times people are like, oh, I just bid the job. And like, you know, they, they kind of treat it transactionally. I'll bid the job. And if, and if there's, if they bite, they treat it almost like fishing. They're going to throw the reel, a quick reel. And if the fish bites, if they bite, then maybe they'll spend some time on it. But if not, it's not worth their time. And the truth is that if you don't sit there and wait patiently, like a good fisherman, you're not going to catch anything. So you have to spend the time to go to the job site walkthroughs, visit the clients. You have to invest the time in the strategic people. So ultimately, when you win your first jobs, you knock them out of the park. And that's going to give you a chance to work with a superintendent and to work with a project management team. And guess who decides who gets the next jobs? The project management team and the project managers typically ask the supers, Hey, who do you want to do this job? Oh, I want Daniel for, for my builders because they know how to, they know how to do it right. Or I want your company, hopefully your company to do it right because you know, that's the guy I want. And that's how you win jobs. Hey, so what are you doing to get inside information and what partnerships are you building within companies? Put it in the comments below and let me know what you think. If you hate those tips or if you love them, let me know. Now, strategy number three, follow up on all of your bids and make sure that you keep in touch with all of your potential prospects. Let me tell you something. The biggest killer of winning construction projects is in the follow-up because a lot of contractors, they're so busy with the emergencies. They're so busy with the, with the estimating. They're so busy with everything else, all the emergencies that come up that when, when it comes time to do the follow-up, they don't do it. They just don't do it. Or they don't have a way to do it. So pro tip here is you're going to want to get a lead management tool. So a lead tracker, a project tracker, you can even do this on Excel. Just make sure that you have a way to track all of your projects. We're actually at the time of this recording, we're, we're actually building our own. It's called capstone. It's not a hundred percent ready. So hopefully in the very near future, we'll have that ready and we'll be able to release it to you so that you can check it out. Now, why is this valuable? Um, I'll give you a quick story. So a few years ago, I was doing some prospecting and I pulled up our CRM and I started seeing all the people who we've submitted proposals or that we've worked with in the past. And I just went down the list to call, 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 call. So I literally was like pull it, picking up the phone, calling every single person. And this goes back to the inside information tip and the strategic relationships tip. So I call this one company called By His Grace Construction. And the person that answered the phone was a secretary. And a lot of people wouldn't even care to talk to a secretary because they're not a decision maker. But I spent the time to actually talk to her. And I said, hey, you know, what other project, what projects do you have coming up? Oh, I don't know. Let me get you with my project management team. I'm going to forward your information. So they forward the information. And the next day I get a phone call from a gentleman, a project manager named JC. And he literally said, hey, I'm desperate for a drywall contractor. We already started the demo on this project and we need somebody ASAP. Can you please submit a proposal by tomorrow? If the numbers are good, I'm gonna hire you right away. I was like, of course we will. So we, I put together an estimate for our company. It wasn't Iron Builders, it was before Iron Builders. So I submitted the proposal, $500,000. And he says, hey, I wanna give you a contract. I just wanna meet you and the owner uh, in a meeting. We had that meeting, everything was good. And we closed that deal in only a couple of weeks. Now, let me tell you something that never would have happened if I wouldn't have been following up. So how do you follow up? Follow up on your projects, follow up with the contacts, follow up with people that might lead you to more projects. All you got to do is call, just, just put it on your schedule, call people every two to three weeks. Boom. And if you have start building a master list, the most important valuable tip I can give you ever in construction is to build yourself a master list. You're going to use it for prospecting. You're going to use it for following up. You're going to use it to close. You're going to use it to negotiate. It's like the most powerful tool any contractor can have in his arsenal. Make a list of everybody and just start calling. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, actually, one of my clients, he's a plumbing contractor out of uh, Arizona. He just closed in seven months 
I've been working with him on one-on-one -on -one consulting and he just closed in seven months. He went from $600,000 to $7.4 million that he's gotten already. And um, these are not like little plumbing jobs. These are like multi-story buildings. These are developer projects, projects of, of, of hundreds of houses. So he's worked and I asked him, I said, Hey Matt, like, how are you doing this? This, this is amazing results. And he said, he goes, dude, it's the master list that you taught me. The number one thing that I've learned from you is the master list. So what did he do? He got his master list. I told him, go through your phone, go through your email, go through every contact of anybody that could potentially have a project and call them and say, Hey, do you have a project? Hey, do you have a project? Hey, do you have a project? It's not that complicated. Now, granted, you're going to get, you're going to have to be doing kind of like cold calling, but these are people that already know you. These are clients of yours. These are people in the past. You, I mean, I mean, take advantage, go through your list, call the people, and you're going to be amazed at how much work you're going to drum up just from doing that. Strategy number four, keep your finger on the pulse. So this is what finger on the pulse is. You're literally checking your, your pulse, right? Keep your finger on the pulse on projects. So you know when to strike. What happens a lot of times is people will submit the proposal, they'll send it, they get, they get it, and they, they maybe call two or three times for follow-up and they just kind of like throw it out. Not throw it out, but they're so busy that they just kind of like dismiss it. They don't have that much time to just continue, continually follow up. But what a lot of people don't realize is in commercial construction, there is a three to six month period that whatever you bid today, you're not going to see the results of these bids for three months up to six months. Why? Because behind the scenes, there's negotiating, there's revisions, there's bank financing that typically takes three, to, you know, two to three months. Sometimes there's value engineering, there's permitting. There's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes that people aren't like really thinking about. And so a lot of times you will probably get the job if you just followed up. But what happens is you got to call every two to three weeks for updates, call, visit, email. It's so simple. Put on your calendar two weeks from now, I'm going to call them two weeks after that. I'm going to pass by and throw in a quick visit. Hey, I was in the area. I just wanted to, you know, check in. How are, how are the projects coming along? I submitted this, this, and this. Can I get an update? Boom. And since you're going to take the time to drive there, they're usually going to give you an update. You can email, you can text, you can call. So basically you want to vary your follow-ups. You don't want to just like every two weeks show up in the guy's office. Cause they're going to be like, dude, like get out of here. Or you don't want to call every two weeks. Cause then you're going to look needy. And then it's going to go against you because then they're going to think like, Hey, this guy probably doesn't have a job. So let's not hire him. So what you do is you want to schedule every two to three weeks or if you want to be safe about it every three weeks, put it in your schedule. Okay. Week number one, I'm going to do a visit. Week number two, I'm going to do a phone call. Week number three, I'm going to do a, a text. Week number four, I'm going to do an email. So you kind of alternate it, right? But if you have your finger on the pulse, you're always getting updates on the project. The reason I put this one here is because now a culmination of all the tips, if you get the inside information, if you have the strategic contacts, if you're following up on your bids, you're going to get all the information, all the data, all the numbers, everything that you need to know when to strike. And uh, what do I mean by strike, they might be getting close on their project. And if you just, if you're just constantly there and you know about the updates, if you're bidding 20, 30, 50 projects a month, you're going to be busy with your follow-up. So you have to track it. So that's why it's important when you do your follow-up, you have a tracking tool because you, you have to track those jobs. And every time you visit and follow up, that's a touch point. You're going to get, build better relationships. They're going to know you, they're going to trust you. Um, and ultimately when the time comes that they're already awarded or they're about to be awarded, if you're there who's going to get the job, the guy that submitted a proposal six months ago, or you that you're there at a minimum, they're going to give you what is called last look. Hey, Daniel. Hey, John. Um, I know that you've been coming and visiting, you know, every two weeks, every three weeks. So I want to give you at least the opportunity to give, I want to give you the last look before we decide on who to pick. I want to give you the last chance to be the low bidder or to submit your final proposal to see what we can do here. That's really where you want. That's really where you want to be at because that's when you're going to have the last chance to close that deal. So remember, you want to be a closer. You don't want to be a, you don't want to just like follow up and you don't want to just submit proposals. You want to close the deal. Hey, so talking about closing, there's a button below called the subscribe button. Go ahead and subscribe so that you can get notified every time we release another video like this packed with tons and tons of value. Strategy number five. Close the deal at cost and use your change orders as a strategic tool for your sales. Now, this is an advanced pro tip. When we get into a bidding war, what happens is 
it goes uh there, there's a back and forth on price and a lot of times you're gonna run into the scenario that no matter how much of a good relationship you have no matter how much of a reputation you have with the client sometimes it just boils down to price and everything that i teach is about building up your perceived value and the way you do it is by either building up your reputation within an organization doing a good job uh, visiting them building the relationships or sometimes if you don't know them or sometimes there's a battle on price because you're equally qualified then this is like a ninja pro tip for you what you're gonna do is you're gonna actually perform a detailed accurate estimate of your true cost your true labor and your true material cost and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna you're gonna take only very small profit margin or even at cost or if it's a really competitive job below cost because what happens is ultimately your competitors are going to have the same cost as you the labor is the same uh, it's going to vary by a few cents here and there a few dollars here and there between guys you know hourly rates but ultimately the labor is almost the same and the materials are almost the same you might get a better deal because you have more volume but i'm we're only talking about like if you're getting the drywall for 45 cents maybe i'm getting it for 47 cents so we're not even talking about big costs now where you win the jobs are your profit your overhead your supervision and your contingencies this is really these four are really where you're gonna make or break the project so what do you do number one you take on a very low salary as a supervisor maybe you have your own superintendent maybe a foreman if you are the superintendent there you have a lot of play with the number because you don't necessarily need a full-time superintendent because you're already making money on your profit margin. Now, a lot of people don't realize this, but change orders can actually be a valuable asset, a valuable tool for you to use in your closing. So for example, everybody's trying to squeeze the maximum profit. And there's this concept in retail marketing called the loss leader, where you'll actually, they'll actually market the cheapest TV or the cheapest computer in the Sunday paper or in the email marketing where they'll get a lot of people in the door, right? At a, because they're looking for this cheap thing. But what they'll do is they'll put that TV or that computer under cost so that it's actually, they're actually at a loss, but then a certain amount of people will take the computer bag, the mouse, the warranty, the antivirus software. So they end up making a lot of profit from these add-ons. Construction is the same thing. Now, the thing is that everybody's trying to squeeze the maximum profit. So your competitors are putting in 20%, 30%, 40% profit margins. What if, what if you come in and you put in a 0% profit margin? Or now if you want to be really, really ballsy, put in a negative like 5%, right? So you're actually gonna be coming negative, coming low, but you're coming in basically at cost. And you, if you know that your typical change order rate is about 10 to 30% of whatever your contract value is, you know that you're gonna make up that cost in change orders. So you can whoop and destroy all of your competitors using this loss leader retail marketing concept in construction. So I'll give you an example. You come in at cost, you, let's say you, your true costs are 200,000. And, and your competitors are putting in a 30% profit margin. So they're coming in at 260,000, right? It's going to get you in the door to start negotiating. If you get, let's just say on the low end, you get an extra 10 or 15% in change orders. Get, and guess what? Those change orders, you're not billing at the same as a bid rate. You're putting in full burden, you know, maximum price, and you're being very aggressive with it. If you're doing change orders correctly, that means that you're going to be getting an extra 20, 30, 40 grand on your contract value, which is about the same as your competitors, except you're almost stealing the job because they're not going to be able to compete with no cost. They're going to say, Hey, I'm not going to do this job. If I'm only going to make, you know, a hundred bucks off of it, or if I'm not going to make any money, I'm not going to do this job. They're going to think that we're crazy. They're going to say, Hey, they're underbidding the job. But the reality is you're coming in at a better rate because you can, because you're using change orders as a strategy, as a tool. I have a question. Let me know what you think about that. Should you use change orders as a tool to close jobs? Or is it being a little too risky? Put it in the comments below and let me know what you think. Now let's talk about your construction business. I talked to a lot of contractors that they're really struggling to grow their business. They're trying to get ahead. There's a recession coming. They're nervous. I have a question for you. What are you doing in your business to one recession proof your business? And two, what are you doing to build yourself a system so that you can get leads, estimate those jobs faster, close those jobs. 
Like we could talk about all these strategies on inside information, following up. But my question to you is, are you an action taker? If you're watching this video, you probably are. So my question to you is, if I was able to show you step by step how to grow your construction business, is that something that would interest you? Now, guess what? I do have that. <laughs> Below, you're gonna want you're gonna see a link to watch our video training, which is imbuilders.com slash training, where you're gonna learn step by step on how to grow your construction business the right way. Now, if you want my help, if you want my guidance, me and my team, we have a program that you can either get trained by us or we can actually do all your leads, your prospecting, and all of your estimating for you. So if that's something that might interest you, check us out at imbuilders.com or go in the description below and schedule a call with me. Click the button that says learn how, and there you're gonna have the opportunity to schedule a call with me so that we could talk about your company and see how we can help you grow your construction business. All right, so go crush it. And I look forward to helping you grow your construction business.